गुड मॉर्निंग Good morning, guys. Uh, we will wait for five to ten minutes more as we are waiting for a few more participants to join in. Thank you.
Hi guys, those who have joined just now, please note we will start within few minutes. We are waiting for more participants to join in. Thanks for your patience. I request all the participants to please be on mute. OK, so I think it's good time to start. OK, hello and good morning to all. Chaitali this side, your host for today's session, the exam prep session on SC300 certification. Let's get started with a small introduction on session. Before that, let me give you a small introduction about Synergetics, our event sponsor. Synergetics is India's one of kind corporate learning solution, with, uh, which helps any industry to be on the top of the competition. We are not only restricted to the group trainings, but we also help uh, every individual profession to succeed in the competitive world. Here are some of the master solution offered by Synergetics that are onboarding solution, reskilling solution, certification, certification plus add-on, cloud adoption, architecting, practice playbook, latest technology training and emerging technology training. Today's session is organized by ATC community and sponsored by Synergetics and Microsoft. Our ATC community is open to all the people who are interested in Microsoft Cloud technologies. You just need to follow our meetup groups, which are Emerging Technology Community for All, Azure Tech Community Pune for Pune Kurs, Azure Tech Community Nagpur for Nagpur Kurs, Azure Tech Community Gujarat for Gujarati Tech, and AI on Microsoft Platform Community for AI Groups. You just need to install the Meetup app on your phone and follow our communities so you will get update regarding our upcoming events, webinars, and workshops. Small code of conduct which you all need to follow. Please note that you can't take screenshot of the presentation and cannot do screen recording. If you need the recording, then simply subscribe to our YouTube channel. We will drop the YouTube channel link for you all in the chat box later. Go ahead. Here you can see the session flow for today's session. So basically we will start with 10.20. The session will start by 10.20 a.m. Then we have a small break for 15 minutes. At 11.30, then we will have the MOC activation at 11.45 around. Then the lunch break, it will be for one hour from 1.30 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. Then we will wind up by four. Today's speaker for the session is Ms. Komal Sharma, 
कोमल मैम इज माइक्रोसॉफ्ट थ्री सिक्सटी फाइव सोल्यूशन एक्सपर्ट एज वेल एज माइक्रोसॉफ्ट सर्टिफाइड ट्रेनर गर्ड now the agenda for the session as you can see on the screen in the session participants will get to learn importance of certification and more go ahead okay so here you can see the overview of the sc300 in which who is the certification for exam details are mentioned then we can see the journey for sc300 certification then in this slide journey path is given for sc300 so this will be briefed to you by komal ma'am ahead in the session go ahead now special announcement to do we are providing free moc microsoft official courseware for sc300 with all the participants on their register mail id study material for your exam preparation So, if you want to claim the free MOC for SC three hundred, that is Microsoft Official Courseware, do fill out the MOC activation form. Link will be provided to that form in the chat box. I repeat, uh, the MOC activation form will be provided to you in the chat box, so you can claim your MOC for SC three hundred. Also, we are providing exam voucher on discounted rate. That is for three thousand one hundred, as its actual price is four thousand eight hundred, but we are providing it to you at three thousand one hundred. So if you want to claim or need further information related to the exam voucher, you can drop us mail on the given mail ID. Now we can grow professionally by adding the latest technology skill with Microsoft various certification. You can enroll for any of this uh, training programs with Synergetics, where you will be uh, you will be getting the expertise uh, learnings and sessions with the best industry MCTs. Trust us, and will deliver the best. These all are the fundamentals as well as the advanced courses which we provide. Go ahead. Then we have the next ETT webinar that is Emerging Technology webinar on load testing with Gatling. That is for two hours. Two hours session. The overview will be given to you in this session on thirtieth of September. Go ahead. Then we have the certification webinar on PL two hundred at eighth uh, of October, ten a.m. to four a.m. four four p.m. Sorry, it will be a full day webinar. So the registration link to that will be provided to you uh, in the chat box, so you can register through that. Go ahead. Then follow us on our social media platforms, so you will get the updates regarding the upcoming webinars and workshop. Now I will like to hand over the mic to Komal Ma'am, so she can go ahead with the session. Thank you. Thanks to all. Thank you, Chitani. hello everyone i welcome you all to uh, to sc300 exam prep session so i am your uh, a trainer today for, for the session myself komal sharma so chitali already have given my introduction so now let's start with the session before starting with the journey of sc300 first i would like you all to focus on the different microsoft security related certification what is the security solutions or what are the different security related certifications are available and what is the path for the same so that it will be easy for you to just analyze whether you are on a right path or if you are on this platform have you already completed the prerequisite and once you are done with sc300 what should be the next path let me just open uh, give me a minute
okay so here we will be discussing uh, about uh, different training certification available related with the microsoft security so here when you are starting your journey with uh, microsoft security so here when you are totally new to this microsoft security environment okay you are even you do not have the basic understanding about the sem so this is the best way to start with your journey with se 900 se 900 covers all the fundamental concept related with the related with the security compliance and identity so i hope when you are there on this platform like se 300 you all must be having uh, se3 se900 certification or if it is not so no problem if you are having basic understanding about the microsoft security environment you can move ahead okay so now moving ahead now here you have different other security certification like you have az500 az500 is related with azure platform like when you are handling the security solution security environment for azure you can go for sc az500 similarly you have sc200 sc300 and sc400 these all are the associate level certification now when you are on microsoft platform so for ms 900 my ms 900 gives you the basic understanding of office 365 environment or microsoft 365 environment so right now you all are on the basic setup like what i as a trainer what i am understood uh, that you all are having the basic understanding about the security environment now what next so here as per your current rule or as per your current need you can choose the different security related certification like here if you are an azure administrator where you are handling the cloud resources you are uh, responsible for managing the cloud security okay whatever the resources are there in your azure environment then you can go for az 500 then if you are a microsoft 365 administrator means you are mainly responsible for the security and the management part, part of microsoft 365 in that case you can go for ms 500 now if you are a security operation analyst or if you want to go for this particular role then you have the best certification that is sc 200 so sc200 is basically to uh, secure your environment from the threats here you will be monitoring the environment is there any chances for the threat any threat detection is there so you can control that now if you are a identity and access administrator like you are uh, given the responsibility to create the identity manage the identity what access should be given to them what is the authentication method that all if you are managing then this is the best certification that is sc 300 and after this certification you will be identity and access administrator this is what all are associate level okay now if you want to move ahead with the expert uh, Like that expertise you have sc 100 sc 100 like when you really wants to attempt for sc 100 you must be having any of these certification like is in a 500 ms 500 sc 200 and so on so now here you can take the advantage of free or one day uh, virtual training events like microsoft used to conduct different uh, events okay so that like it is actually the best platform for you to start with a microsoft certification journey here when you are attending the microsoft security uh, related session that is especially for the fundamental just by attending this session you would be able to attempt for that fundamental examination that totally free of cost okay then here there are other virtual training events that is related with microsoft security zero trust microsoft security protect data and manage risk then microsoft security modernize security and defend against 
so here you will if you will notice on my screen here this is what when you are actually starting the only the fundamental level this is as i said for that you have sc 900 like if you are starting from scratch you do not have any knowledge i recommend you to first go to sc 900 just try to understand the basic security concept and then move ahead, uh, move ahead. of course directly there is no foundation that first you need to complete the certification then only you can go for sc 300 200 and so on it's not like that but yes if you will directly jump to sc 300 200 or the for the associate level certification somehow it will be little challenging for you okay so better first understand the fundamental concept then we can move on to the uh, different role that is the associate level role like we have just discussed the associate level role like az 500 ms 500 then sc 200 su 300 sc 400 and so on and of course if you want to uh, reach to the advanced level then here you have sc 100 so this is what sc 900 where we cover the basic concept of the security az 500 related with the azure security Uh, MS 500 related with the uh, Microsoft 365 environment. Then exam SC 200. This is for security operation analyst where we will be covering we covers how to mitigate the threats using Microsoft 365 Defender. How to mitigate threats using Microsoft Defender for cloud. We will uh, we cover here Microsoft Defender for uh, Office 365 and so on. Then for SC 300 here. uh this exams cover the concept of implementing identities implementing authentication and access management implementing access management for application and how you can plan and implement identity governance in azure ad now if you choose to become information protection like if you are totally concerned about the information part like how to create the sensitive label uh, retention label in all in that case you can go for sc 400 here you would be able to implement implement dlp policies that is data loss prevention policies you will be implementing information governance and in, uh, information protection and about the sc 100 that is the expert level here you would be able to design a zero trust strategy and architecture then you would be able to evaluate governance risk compliance you would be able to design security for infrastructure and strategy for data and application now if we start with a fundamental what is actually covered here so here when you are uh, like for example if you are working in your organization and here you have to handle the fundamentals uh, uh environment of security environment in your organization or you should be having basic understanding of security compliance and identity then you can start your journey with sc2 uh, sc900 here there is a uh, documentation totally provide for sc900 okay then uh, when you will be covering this sc900 here you would be understanding the concept of security compliance and the capability of identity and access management then capability of microsoft security solution and capabilities of microsoft compliance solution and once you are done you would be microsoft certified fundamentals and with security compliance and identity with azure security engineer associate once you have completed this exam when you are passed you would be able to get the microsoft security microsoft certified associate for azure security engineer okay for security administrator uh, associate as i said this is for microsoft 365 security environment so once you clear this exam you will get the certificate you will be certified for security administrator associate for security operations analyst associate you need to pass exam sc 200 and you will be security operations analyst associate 
after identity and access administrator associate here for this position you need to pass exam sc 300 and for information administrator associate you need to pass exam sc 400 for the expert level once you have completed once you have passed exam sc 100 you will be microsoft certified cyber security architect expert so this was all about the security training and certification guide if anyone has any doubt uh, if you have more questions or queries about the sc certification you can put in your chat box i will be answering for the same before starting the session, I just want you guys to be interactive. If you have any query, any question, any doubt, please type in chat box. Frequently, I will be checking the chat box and I will try my level best to give the answer of your queries. OK, so let's start with SE 300. So when um, there is one part. question, sorry, sorry to interrupt. There is one question. Mm -hmm. AZ 500 covers SC 300 or both are different? No, totally are different. As I said, both are of course the security related certification, but AZ 500 covers a uh, Azure platform. Like for example, if you are handling Azure platform, here you have different resources, like you have created different resources and you are responsible for the security of that resources you have to create the security solution for your azure infrastructure in that case this certification best suits you okay that is azure uh, sorry ez 500 but on the another hand sc 300 is totally different okay under sc 300 it totally covers the identity and access administration like if you handle azure ad Okay, if you handle Azure AD and here you are responsible for creating the identity here, more you are concerned toward the identity, how to create the identity, what role should be uh, uh, assigned to them or how you can create a group, how to create the custom rules, how to go for uh, authentication process. If you have to provide conditional access policies and all, and uh, password protection for that this sc30 uh, sc300 is all about so when we will be uh, understanding the sc300 in our today session uh, our understanding for sc300 will be more better okay okay akash so i am starting with sc300 guys please keep uh, putting your queries in chat box okay so when we are on this SC 300, like for identity and access administrator exam, here basically we will be focusing on four main area. Like here you would be able to first design, implement and operate an organization identity and access management by using Azure Active Directory. So here mainly we are going to focus on Azure Active Directory. Here we will be discussing how we can provide secure authentication and authorization access to your enterprise application and the administrator provides seamless experience like here as uh, like as an administrator of course you have to handle different responsibilities like for the security of your identities for the access and all but don't you think that uh, half of our uh, our headache we can just decrease or we can remove just by uh, taking the advantage of this environment where we can uh, we can have self service management capabilities for the user like users should be able to set their password reset their passwords and all okay so that all we will be discussing here then to go for the access and governance that are the main important element to any role what you can how you can go for the troubleshooting if any or how to monitor the report like if there was any security risk, if there any sign in risk, 
if there any user risk or if the identity is compromised how to get the report for the same or if you are going to monitor the activity of any identity what application he has access uh, how long he was accessing the environment uh, like uh, for example if he has reset his password so that all report you will be accessing then how to uh, identify and run projects to modernize identity solution and here you have advantage to take the benefit of hybrid solution hybrid in the sense like not only the cloud but yes if you are working in on premise infrastructure so taking the advantage of both like the cloud and the on premise so that solution is again here that is a hybrid solution so especially for the identities what how you can implement the hybrid solution we will be discussing here so as you are going to start with this course you must be having the basic understanding about the security infrastructure you must be understanding what is microsoft 365 what is microsoft 365 services what is microsoft license uh, what is role what is identity okay so that basic concept the cloud related concept you must be having okay then you are good to go with sc 300 as a certification there are four main studies area the very first one that is how to implement an identity management solution and at my right side here you can have a look the weightage for the same weightage in the in the sense like uh, in your exam you will be getting around 55 to 60 questions okay so in that 55 to 60 question five to 30 questions will be from this area okay for implementing an authentication and access management solution the weightage for the same is 25 to 30% how to implement access management for app for this study area the weightage is 10 to 15% so if the weightage is less it doesn't mean you are not going to focus more on this area no it's not like that you have to focus on each and every study area okay then only you would be able to get good marks when you will be appearing for sc 300 exam uh, the exam it is total for 1000 marks and out of 1000 it is compulsory for you to get at least 700 marks to clear the exam now and the fourth one that is plan and implement an identity governance strategy and again the weightage for the same is 25 to 30% so this is so like i have an idea that what type of questions can be there and what will be the weightage for the same so that's what's all about the introduction of this sc300 so i will be starting with my first module okay uh, in this uh, se 300 certification session journey we will be covering this session in two part the first part we will be discussing the uh, concept related with se 300 or the concept related with the study areas as uh, we are not having enough time to complete the entire course but yes we will try our level best to complete at least to give you the understanding about the sc300 course and six that you need to focus okay and the second part uh, i think after the lunch break i will be covering all the labs okay so this is how in two parts we will be covering there are total four modules but yes i will uh, try to cover more and more modules if it would be possible as we have to focus on the concept plus labs so we'll try to complete that okay so let's start with the first module so in this first module we will be discussing how to implement an identity 
so when you are on azure active directory so here first your requirement is to configure azure active directory like by default i hope you all know that when you have a environment setup by default along with your certification uh, along sorry along with your uh, uh, license office 365 or e35 or e3 license you get a free azure active directory license okay so the very first configure azure active directory as per your requirement we have two azure active directory license that is p1 and p2 we will be discussing in deep later on so when your azure active directory is implemented it is configured then it is very important for you to start working with identities so in that case first you need to create the identity like very first time when you are going to set up the environment account is for the admin and then you have to add different identities identities can be added as a user it can be a device it can be a group it can be a guest user so here we will be creating identities and we should know how to manage those identity along with your internal identities in our organization we work with external identities too that external identities can be a vendor or sometime we need someone like as a addition for few few months and then he will be helping our environment to just set up some it needs and all and then we do not need that identity more okay so in that case you need to add that identity as a external identity in your environment now as i said here you can take the advantage of hybrid environment so here we will be discussing how you can manage a hybrid identity in va so in our first lesson we will be managing uh, we will be conferring uh, configuring and managing the azure active directory role like when you are added uh when you have added an identity or when you have added a user without the particular role user would not be able to access the environment or just to have the proper management of the environment like a person should be able to user setting uh, another person who is admin uh, who is application administrator another person who is security administrator or help desk administrator so as per the requirement how you can configure the roles to them then along with that here you can manage custom domain okay in every organization they have custom domains how we can manage the custom domains and the domain then we will discuss it then how you can manage the device said when you are uh, talking about identity is not only the users but yes it can be a user it can be a group it can be device too so here as an uh, identity concern here we will be managing device too so how you can registration or uh, you can register a device then what is administrative unit what is the advantage for the same and how to configure the same then here you will be getting set up tenant wide setting so let's start with our first topic so azure active directory azure active directory is a cloud based identity solution and we can say it's a identity and access management service that help you to or your your uh, identities or your employees to sign in and access resources so here they can use external resources uh, like uh, or the internal resources means such as the app on your corporate network and internet and along with any cloud app developed by your own organization that is your internal resources external resources like for example office 365 you have uh, azure portal 
and then different other SaaS applications like you have Teams, you have uh, Microsoft Forms, then you have Power Automation and all so on. So that we will be managing. Then Azure Active Directory, you can see it's the next evaluation of identity and access management solutions. Microsoft introduced Azure AD uh, domain services. OK, like uh, I think you all must be having idea about Active Directory that we used to work for managing the uh, on premise identity. And when we talk about the cloud identity here, you have Azure Active Directory. So already many organizations, they were working with Active Directory domain services for the Windows. But here as uh, we have now. Move to cloud, so our identity is again are created and managed in cloud too. So for that Microsoft has provided this is a very useful platform that is Azure Active Directory. These all are the uh, link for the portal. Like if you have to, if you are admin and you need to access Azure Active Directory, you have different options to start working with. Like if you are on Azure portal, okay, in that when you will find for Azure Active Directory, you can directly jump to Azure Active Directory, or you can. Uh, use this link aad.portal.azure.com. This will directly take you to Azure Active Directory admin portal. And if you want to go via Microsoft 365 admin center, then you can follow this link. And if you are on cloud app security portal, then again you will get option to go to Azure AD. I'm just sharing the. Just a I have few questions here. Do we get M MS or SE 300? Uh, Akash, uh, MS ebook. Uh, I think Chaitali can help me out. What are the content will be shared with you guys? Uh, Chaitali, can you please uh, let them know what if they are getting any content for SE 300? Or what I can help you out? I will be sharing the link that the proper document uh, that is provided in cloud. So you can access those link and you will be having the entire. Uh, whatever the modules are there, whatever the courses are there, whatever the chapters are there, there is a detailing for the same along with lab two. So that I will be sharing, but Chetali will be clearing uh, if any ebook and all is shared with you. Uh, yeah, so basically we are providing free MOC for SC 300. So MOC activation form has been uh, shared with you all in the chat box. So you can submit your response on that. So we can share the MOC code to you on your mail ID. That's all we are providing for free as well as we have discounted exam voucher. So if you want uh, the exam voucher at discounted rate for SC 300, we will be providing the same. So you can share your details on my mail ID, which I have been posted in the chat box for same. Thank you. I hope Akash you could get your answer. Srinivas is asking, hi, can you share form once again? OK, yes, it will be shared Srinivas. So I'm yeah, going yeah, back to my. Also the, uh, the form has been pinned to you above the chat. Uh, you can see the pinned pinned one by me, the message has been pinned, so you can go through that and uh, submit your response. OK, guys, so don't worry. Uh, I will be sharing uh, related links. OK, so you can access that. See. OK, so as I said, when you are working with Azure AD, 
for a user or for a administrator it is easy for them to perform any activity or responsibility when a particular role is assigned to them right in place of giving them the global admin right it is not safe like a uh, security point of view is not right to give a uh, global admin right to any user hardly you can have one or two global admin that's it but for other administrative need you have to it okay like a person who is only concerned for guest invite a person who is only concerned for user identities and so on so basically azure ad roles are used to manage azure ad resources in a directory such as creating or editing user assigning administrative role to others a person only concerned about resetting user password how to manage user license and manage here of course we have a different uh, roles predefined roles provided but if it doesn't suits your need here you can go and create new custom role so custom roles can be shared between subscription that trust the same azure ad directory and there is a limit of 5000 custom role per directory so that's that's actually great like you can create up to 5000 custom roles uh, custom roles can be created using the azure portal or you can create as per with azure powershell azure cli or the rest api now of course we have discussed about the role we have discussed about the custom role and a very important thing is how to assign the role so azure role based access control that is azure rbac it's a is a authorization system you use to manage access to azure resources it says you assign role to users group service principles or manage identity at a particular scope so here just think about assigning different lo role like for example who need access so here you need to define the users or the group as a service principle or a manage identity then second once you have selected users then you have to pick the right role to assign like for example here you have now that group should be assigned what role what responsibility they are sharing and then you have to select the scope whether their scope is limited to a subscription resource group or a resource level and then finally you can assign the role so for assigning the role here you have few very easy steps that i will be covering in my lab and discussing the same <coughs> now when you are going to yes you can go to that role section where you have different role and you can just select the role and assign to any user or group but here if you want to select a user and assign the role to that particular user that again is possible so by selecting that user you can assign the role to them so you can assign a role to manage a broader scope resources like your management group your uh, subscription or resources is in the access control and task within these resources so you have to be very careful when making these assignment because if you grant a billing reader role to management group then anyone in the billing reader can see the billing across every subscription and resource you your azure solution you have to take care while assigning any role now while uh, assigning and making someone eligible for assignment here we can also cover the custom domain part like of course when we uh, set up our account the very first time microsoft provide us a custom domain 
that uh, sorry the default domain the default domain is on microsoft.com okay like account in that case i got like i have put it with my name okay like that is komal chm dot on microsoft.com so that is the default domain of course we need to uh, make it unique if though is it's a do default domain but yes you have to make it unique so for that just before dot on microsoft.com you have to put a uh, you have to make it custom you have to make it unique but example in my organization we are using sanajatic.com or if it is accessbank.com or if it is uh, gmail.com so these all are the custom domain that custom domain you need to set up and all the identities need to use that domain only got it so here you can add a custom domain name for your organization here you can add up to 900 custom domain name for so you can add your dns information to your to the domain register and is very important that you can register as many domain name as you want however each domain gets its own txt record from azure ad okay i hope you if you have ever worked with domain you know about txt and all txt record so that you need to define along with that you need to domain name so after you have registered your custom domain name make sure that it's valid in azure ad and the propagation from your domain register to azure ad it can be uh, like that that uh, it can take a few days depending on your domain registrar like of course you need to uh, take the help of domain registrar and accordingly your domain name will be registered you can force delete a domain name in azure ad admin center or using microsoft graph api these options use an asynchronous and update all references from the custom domain name like for example uh, it is like in my case it is uh, komal@contoso.com okay to the initial domain Uh, names such as like as i said that is komal at the rate komal chm dot on microsoft dot com so this is how you can configure your custom domain now along with your users as i said your device is again a part of identity so azure ad registered devices are sign in to using a local account like a like a microsoft account on a windows 10 devices but additionally it is having a azure ad account attached for access to organization resources so if i am using my device see there can be two cases i will be using my device my personal laptop or it can be organization has given me a device to be used or you my to use organization resources like if i am using my mobile and i am using microsoft teams in outlook and i am accessing my official uh, mail via my mobile so in that case your organization can register your devices when you are registering the devices here basically it support bring your own devices means as a employee if i am using my device my personal device and for my office purpose for profession like for professional need in that case here my organization will ask me to register that devices now when we are registering our devices it doesn't means that my organization is uh, looking what i am doing in my personal device it's not like that or even my organization is not going to control my personal device this registered device means you are allowing you use their personal device but when they are accessing any organization related data organization related apps any other service or resource 
in that case organization can control you or can control your access whether you have to go for multi factor authentication it can be or it will be that when you are using it via your mobile you would not be able to download the file or you would not be able to take the screenshot okay. this azure ad registered device concept works so administrator can secure and further control these azure ad registered devices using mobile device management tool like you you must be having idea about microsoft intune but now it is mobile device management tool so here uh, mdm actually provides a mean to enforce organization required configuration like uh, requiring storage then password complexity then uh, security software it means like you have to keep on uh, updating your password like after 3 months your password will be expired so as a an administrator you can complete when accessing the work application for the first time or manually using the window 10 setting menu no azure ad joint devices azure ad joint is intended for organization that want to be cloud first or cloud only so any organization can the joint devices no matter the size or industry yes it's, it doesn't mean like you are working in a small size industry and you would not be able to take the advantage for the same it's not like that it suits to both like to small and for large enterprises so azure ad join works when, even in a environment enabling access to both cloud and on premises like as i said the hybrid environment so in hybrid environment you process managing your identity both in cloud and on premises so azure ad join devices are signed in to using an organization azure ad account and access to resources in the organization it can be uh, further limited based on that azure ad account and condition access policies that is applied to the device identity so can secure and further control ad joint devices using uh, mdm that is uh, microsoft device management so azure ad join devices it can be accomplished using self service options like the out of box experience bulk enrollment or windows auto pilot now has a hybrid azure ad join devices means as i said whenever the terms comes hybrid it means uh, like you are on premise resources and plus you are accessing the cloud resources so for more than a decade many of the nation have used a domain join for on premise active directory so here when you are taking when you are going for hybrid azure ad joint devices so via that devices your employee users would be able to access the resources whether they are accessing the on premise resources or the cloud resources we have discussed about the users identities and roles but now for example you have different business units okay like one uh, of your business unit is in is in delhi one is in mumbai one is in chennai one is in calcutta now in that case don't you think to assign a role to a user and he is controlling access of all the units i think you should restrict a user dedicated to delhi unit a user dedicated for mumbai unit a user dedicated for chennai unit and a user dedicated for calcutta unit so this is how this concept is actually administrative unit means you are making unit as per the administration okay means 
giving role to someone like for example there is a user management role okay and i am pro management role to xyz then xyz is going to manage all the users all the units i do not want that i want that x should be controlled as per the unit okay so in that case we can explore the capability of administrative unit so i will just uh, take the example of a diagram so that i can make this concept more clear to you uh okay now for example here four units Okay, so I am having four unit. This one uh, I can take a text. Okay. So this is my unit one. This is for unit two. this is unit 4 okay now as i said i have four units now four business units now for that i need four administrator okay i do not want that only a single administrator should be able to control all my order entities so in that case what i will be doing i am having uh, for example four users so i will be taking this user then one user here and one more user now here i need so ad so here i will pick a zor ad Okay, I will be just taking this one, just for Azure AD, and this is my Azure AD tenant. Now here. all these okay okay so all these units comes under this one azure ad tenant now here 
this unit going to reset user password okay but he is going to make it only for a particular unit so for that i can just take a arrow Actually, I should take this arrow. Okay, I'm just deleting it. Okay, so now this user is going to handle this department only, and the responsibility of this user is to reset the password. And same for others. Now here, I just need circle I will be putting. And here I will be putting AU in between. This one AU. Yes, so now here, this is the entire diagram of Azure uh, AD administrative unit. So just by making this diagram, I just want you to just visibly, uh, visually understanding for this concept. So now here you can see this is the Azure AD tenant and under this Azure AD tenant, you have different units. Now these units can be as per different location, as I said, it can be the Delhi, it can be your Mumbai, it can be Calcutta and so on. Similarly, you can make it for a. Like I have a HR department, I have marketing department, I have operations department, production department. So similarly, you can consider this unit as a department too. 
and here i am having one user or one admin dedicated for this particular unit or this particular department his responsibility is to reset the password okay so now in between this user and this unit this au concept works this is what administrative unit so when you are going to create administrative unit here you need to define what role you are going to provide in this and who are the user or the group you are going to assign in this au so whoever the users you have added to this au and whatever the role you have added to this au accordingly this unit will be administered got it so this is how actually this administrative unit concept works so i hope this concept was clear if anyone any question please keep on uh, typing in the chat box if anyone any question related with the administrative unit please keep on uh, type in the chat box so there is one question from shriniva okay yes there are 500 customs roles and 900 custom domain names you can add here so you can add up to 900 custom domain name any other question Okay. Okay. So Pratima, you want me? Keep a side. Okay. Now, when you are on this Azure AD portal. in that portal you are having different users okay and as a administrator you are going to assign different roles to a particular user okay so that he will be handling that particular administrative role but the time you assign that role to user whoever the users are there in that tenant that user would be able to control all the users or he will be working on entire organization level like here if this is the user he is user admin okay he is having right to change the password for users but if this au concept is not there then this user can change the password for this entire organization level users but if you want to control this admin to a particular unit or a particular department then you can create au so au is just to restrict the admin access or to control the admin access to a particular group or to particular department or to any particular location i hope it is clear pratima is it clear akash is it clear okay perfect so when we will be covering lab i we will be understanding this concept better okay so the common delegation rule like again by controlling the access again you can control the access not only to giving access to a particular unit but yes you can uh, give that role for a particular time period or just in time access just in time means as a admin if i want to reset the password of any particular user i need to ask the permission for the same this is what just in time or for how long i want to give this access only for a month only for 3 month that again i can control 
so you can delegate administrative task with built in role like already there are some predefined roles that is provided here like for the cloud application and set role enterprise application owner role application developer role and so on now as we are uh, a part of any tenant right so in azure ad you will get the option to control the tenant wise setting just a minute okay so in azure ad basically all users are granted a set of default permission so a user access consists of a type of user their role assignment and their ownership of individual object so the default user permission can be changed only in user setting in azure ad so here when you are in the tenant wise setting whatever the setting you will apply it will be applied to the entire tenant so this is actually for the global value set and here you can even ma manage the member the guest users how guest users should be added whether the other users or other identities in your organization have right to uh, send invite to a guest user or not okay how to manage the security default like when you are starting with any uh, setup like the very first uh, environment and you really do not know from where to start this there is security default so when you enable security default by default it just create a default or the basic security environment in your organization so that again you can manage here in tenant wise setting and plus you can explore the setting related with the external collaboration so it's time to take a break it's 11:20 so let's take a break for 15 minute then we will come back and Uh, understand more concepts related with Azure AD identities. So I'm just sharing a link for sharing my screen with 15 minute timer. Yes, guys. Till the time we are on break, I request all those who have yet to share the MOC activation form, please do it fast as we can share the code with you all. I request all those who have yet to submit the form, please do it. The link for the MOC activation form has been submitted to you all in the chat box, so you can put your response on that. Thank you.
I hope by now everyone has submitted their responses to claim the free MOC. The Microsoft official courseware for SC300. We'll share the code with you all in few minutes. Also, I request all those who have joined the session late. Please submit your response on the MOC activation form as we are providing free MOC that is Microsoft official courseware for SC300. Once you will submit the response on the form, we will share the MOC code with you all. Thank you. Hello everyone, I am back. I hope you all are there. Someone has raised the hand. Any issue? Yes, any doubt you have? Mohammed Naveed, do you have any doubt? Any question you have? Okay, so let's continue. Yeah, so we were discussing about the user setting. So in the user setting, like in Azure AD portal, you get the option to set the user setting, like where you can set whether a user is able to uh, register for any application, whether you want to restrict him to access Azure AD or not, or can he connect, uh, can he use a LinkedIn account, uh, connect with his organization account or not? And there itself, you will get option to manage your external collaboration setting where you will be setting uh, for uh, guest uh, user access restrictions, whether your organization uh, user should be able to send invite to them or not. Only the member user or guest again can send an invite to another guest and so on. Then here you have tenant related properties where you can get the detail idea like your tenant ID, technical contact, any global privacy contact that all you can see here. So let's just uh, go to our Azure AD portal. Let's just explore that. What are the different uh, settings are there? And then we will come back here on this PPT. So when you are starting with uh, Azure AD, if, uh, if you want to uh, perform the lab, like just for your practice purpose after the session, uh, the very first thing you need, the trial account, okay? So for that, I'm just giving you a link um, so this is for Office 365 E3 trial license. When you will open this link, you will get the option to start with a free trial or if you are having a uh, free trial of Azure portal. From there itself, you can access your Azure AD. So both the options are available. 
but uh, if you are accessing this portal you will be able to experience other office 365 services too i am just sharing this link Okay, so once your account is set up, you can log into your account. And here I am just directly going to access Azure AD portal. I have already shared the link for the same. To access the Azure AD portal directly. Okay, so when you will be landed to your Azure ED admin center, here this is the dashboard. In this dashboard, the very first thing you will notice that is your domain name. Right now, I am not using any custom domain. That's why it is showing me the default domain that I have set up for my trial account. Okay, and right now I am logging with my admin account only. So here you can notice I am having E5 trial account. So that's why I'm having access of Azure AD premium free to. Uh, OK, so now here you will get other option. There is a quick uh, task like directly if you want to add a user, add a guest user, group user. So these all are the direct link. You can access directly from the dashboard. Now here you have the tile for users and group. Then here if you want to go with Azure AD Connect, what is Azure AD Connect? We will discuss in detail later. But right now, just Azure a tool to set up the hybrid identity environment. OK, so that's what all about the dashboard. Now here, I just want you to put focus on Azure Active Directory pricing. Like as I have discussed, uh, whatever the license you are going to have, you get a basic license, Azure Active Directory basic license. But for the premium features, you can explore the P1 and P2 license. So Azure AD premium P2, this is for the pricing options that you can purchase. Then. So when you will access this link here, you will get the option to Try Azure for free, even if you want to set up your Azure account free. Of course, this is actually for the one month. You can explore the Azure portal. So this is for Azure Active Directory plans and pricing. So when you will go through this link, I'm just sharing this link too. So here you can explore the difference between Azure Active Directory free license. What are the features involved here? Then for Azure Active Directory premium P1 license and P2 license. So when you are having Azure, aid, uh, when you are having Office 65 E5 license, this uh, Azure AD P2 license you get free of course. OK, you do not have to purchase separately. If you are using Azure AD 
sorry active uh, sorry office 65 e3 license you get the access of azure ad premium p1 license okay so this is the difference between office 65 e3 license and e5 along with e3 you get p1 along with e5 you get azure ad p2 license now this is active directory free of course whatever the license you purchase for office 65 you get the free license for the same but for the additional uh, features you can uh, additionally purchase p1 or p2 now as it is premium so of course you have some premium features like the conditional access management then you have information protection capabilities that you get with p2 license so you can just explore what are the it is clearly explained what are the options uh, or uh, features are available or not like here you can notice with azure adp2 you have authentication single sign on multi-factor authentication so multi-factor authentication is with p1 and p2 both application access is again with both but authorization and conditional access, as I just said, it is only available with P2. Then uh, again, identity governance, event login reporting. These are available only with P2 license. Please go through this link that I have shared with you. Now I'm coming back to this Azure AD portal. Now here, uh, once the dashboard part is cleared, I will be clicking on all services. Now here you have all services which is available in your license. So this is the services that you are looking here. This is all the premium features that is P2 as I'm having E5 license. OK, so these all are the uh, like identity related services. Then here you have security then hybrid. OK. So now I'm going to click on Azure Active Directory. Now here in this Azure Active Directory, you can manage users, group, external identity. So here you have the setting related to manage the users, group and all. You can manage devices by clicking on this option. Then for identity governance, this is for licenses. And here you get the option for roles and administrator like by clicking on their option. You will get the list of roles which is available. And here you get the option to add new custom role. that all we will cover in lab part. Then I'm just scrolling down. So here I'm having option for user setting. Now here you will notice I'm having all the user settings like whether user can register for the application. Right now it is yes. So user can register for the application. Here I have restricted user to access Azure AD administration portal. So similarly you can set as per your organization need. And here I will allow user to connect their work or school account with LinkedIn. So here I have clicked yes. Here you have the setting for external user. Like I am clicking on manage external collaboration setting. So here you have the setting like whether uh, how you want to restrict guest user access. So here I have clicked for the option where guest user have limited access to property and membership of directory object. And here if you will click on this option, so where whatever the access is provided to the uh, tenant member, the same access will be provided for a guest. Then this is for guest invite setting like here as per this setting, anyone in my organization can invite guest user including the guest like already there is a guest in my organization he can send the invite to in similarly you can restrict the access like no one in the organization can invite guests you can have a separate admin for sharing the guest link and all so as per the restriction level in your organization you can set it 
this is the option that is enable guest self service sign in so for that here you have you can set it as a yes so you can enable guest for the self service sign in then here external user leave setting means allow external user to remove themselves from your organization means automatically they can remove your themselves from your as a admin it is not always on you that you have to delete that you can set it as a yes then this is for the collaboration restriction like you can allow invitation to be sent to any domain okay like right now in my organization i have set that invitation like guess it invitation is allowed for any domain user but if you want to restrict it for any particular domain or if you want to allow any particular domain or deny so you can go with the setting so after the user setting here i am having properties so by clicking on this property you can explore tenant properties where you can see your tenant name okay the country name location what is your tenant id like if you require your tenant id you need to go to azure ad and properties section this is the technical contact number and here just at the extreme bottom you get the option to manage security default i am clicking on this option so as i said security default see this is the option like for example you are totally new to this environment you do not know from where to start like how to start building security solution so the safest thing is that start clicking uh, start with a security default So by clicking on this yes option, you can enable security default. Once this option is enabled, it will automatically enforce your organization identities or all the administrator to perform the multi-factor authentication. Means all will be uh, multi-factor authentication, and other security setting will be applied. So better if you want to go for the identity security solution. then you can enable but yes if you want to go with the multi factor authentication as per particular policy as per particular setting then this option you can just ignore okay so as per like here in my organization for example it is not always required to set up the multi factor authentication for all the employees i just want to be restricted to for particular group or particular users or for admins only in that case you can make it no but yes one thing to focus here when you want to apply conditional access policy make sure this option should be disabled if this option is enabled you would not be able to apply conditional access policy so that was about user setting and tenant setting anyone any question or any doubt any other quality if you want uh, clarity uh, about this topic you can put in the chat box so anyone any query any question related with the current topic no one no Uh, as i said akash that if you have to go for conditional access policy you have to make it disable security default got it so conditional access policy is what means you are applying conditional that yes okay if a, there is admin then only multi factor authentication will be applied but security default matlab by default all will be uh, in the circle of multi factor authentication i hope i am making it clear for you okay so there are few resources i just would like to share with you
I recommend you to please go through these links. This is really helpful for the study purpose, or if you want to do it practically. So in our next chapter, we are going to discuss how we can create, configure, and manage IDEA. So in this chapter, we will discuss how we can create uh, and manage users, group, and how to manage the licenses. So typically, Azure AD actually define users in three ways. The first one that is cloud identities, second that is directory synchronized identity, and third one is a guest. So cloud identities, these users exist. Means for example, you are administrator of Azure AD, and you have uh, created users in Azure Active Directory only, and these identities are created in cloud, and these all are managed in cloud. And when these accounts are removed from the primary directory, they are deleted. But once your directory synchronize identities, these user exists in an on-premise active directory. And with the help of it, you just synchronize these identity with Azure Active Directory. This is also in simple word, this is hybrid identity environment, okay? And here you have guest user, okay? So guest user, they exist outside Azure. They are not a part of your tenant. For example, these are accounts from other cloud providers. And Microsoft accounts such as another organization, they have different tenant or they have like Gmail user. Okay, so these all are guest user. So their source is invited users. So this type of account is useful when external vendors or contractor need to access your Azure resources, okay? So when their help is no longer needed, of course, you can remove their account or all of their accesses, okay? Or if you want to allow them to uh, remove themselves from your side, again, that setting we have just observed. And along with the identity, as we have just discussed, we have users. We have synchronized identities and we have guest users. But here in organization, sometimes we need to create groups too. Groups can be as per like uh, your department, as per any project, as per any security rule. So you need to manage and So here in Active Directory groups help organize a user, which make it easier to manage the permission. Like an in an entire group, you want to assign any permission or any role. Then, of course, as an administrator, it is easy for you to make a group and then assign the membership accordingly. Or similarly, we have just discussed administrative unit, make the group and assign that group to an administrative unit. And in a group, they will be managing that particular AU. Okay. And then you can have dynamic group. So what dynamic, uh, normal groups, but dynamic configuration of security group membership for Azure AD, it is available in Azure portal. Like if you want to set a rule to populate any group, okay, means you have users, but if you want to make a group, as per any condition, okay, in that case, you can create a dynamic group. So in future, any member who just comes in that criteria, automatically he will be the part of that group. This is the main purpose of 
so these groups can provide access to application crowd resources like for example sharepoint sites any documents and to assign license to member an appropriate azure ad p1 or c2 licenses is required to create and use dynamic group means if you have free azure ad uh, license you cannot create dynamic one so for that it is compulsory to have p1 or p2 license tenant setting is done identity is created user is created group is created but without license they would not be able to access your organization resources different application different services so for that you need to assign proper license to those identity in that case you need to manage license so here uh, you have as i is azure ad especially you need to have premium p1 and p2 license with p1 uh, with more demanding identity access management needs you can go for premium features that is p1 this includes everything you need for information worker and identity administrator in your hybrid environment across application access or for uh, self service identity and access management and security in the cloud but along with p2 like some more additional features that you want to enhance with uh, identity protection privilege identity management capabilities in the sense like restricted the just in time access or controlling the access for a particular time period that all you can do with premium p2 license group based licenses if you have to provide the lens uh, license to a entire group so license can be assigned to any security group in azure ad and security groups can be synchronized with on premise by just using azure ad connect you have to keep this thing in your mind every time i am going to repeat this word azure ad connect so azure ad connect is a tool which is used to set up the hybrid environment okay again we will discuss about it so you can also create security groups directly in azure ad or automatically via azure ad dynamic group features so when a product license is assigned to a group you can as a administrator if you want to enable or disable one more service plan in the project that you can do so this licensing or this assignment is done when the organization is not actually ready to start using the services that include the project um for example as administrator uh, might assign microsoft 365 to a department but temporarily he can disable yammer service so that you can do like for example you have other services or other application if you want any uh, group to uh, use for example um, for example uh, power platform okay so in that case you can restrict those user to access power platform license so similarly you can apply the setting as per the group now as we are managing our internal identities similarly we need to manage the external collaboration too once they are added or once they have received the invite it doesn't mean that your response responsibility stops over there as an administrator you have to manage the external collaboration what is the activities going on in your environment via external collaboration or if there is invite sent to external user why this invite is sent what activity they are performing what role is given are they accessing this role is it really like uh, this role is in use to that external user or not so that we do under management of external collaboration so under azure active directory this is known as b2b business to business so your organization need to with the external users like any user who is having gmail account who is having yahoo account who is having any other organization tenant account So you remain in control of what they have access to or for how long. Okay, 
like company sends an invite to a guest user like here this is company a and this company a sends a invite to this guest user okay now this guest user is going to access your company services now your company services may be on cloud or it can be on premises now here of course when that guest user is going to connect with your organization he will be connected via azure active directory only what it way in that case whatever the email id he is using with his own email id he would be able to access your environment okay means you do not need to create additional identity for external user if he is going to connect with facebook account if he is going to connect with a linkedin account or whether he wants to connect with a google account then all options are available with the guest user now here when he is accessing your cloud services or he is accessing your tenant services you can restrict the access of guest user by providing multi factor authentication if he has cleared that authentication he is authenticated himself then he would be able to access the on premise or your cloud resources so here you have different stages uh, or states of a guest user when he is going to enter so anal ek intense of azure ad and represented as a guest user in the inviting organization so in that case your b2b user sign in by using an azure ad account that belongs to the invited tenant so if the partner organization doesn't use azure ad the guest user in azure ad is still created state 2 it is owned in a microsoft or other account and represented as a guest user in the home sign in with a microsoft account or a social account for example your google.com or similar the invited user identity is created as a microsoft account in the inviting organization like your organization state 3 where guest user is in host organizations on premise active directory okay but he is synchronized with host organization organize uh, azure ad means you have identity set up in on premises and the same way that guest identity is in on premises okay so again you are going to synchronize that guest id with your azure ad that is state 3 state 4 azure ad with a user type it means uh, like for example you are uh, handling any project okay in that project you have few external user who are going to work with your organization for 6 month or for one year in that case you can create a new identity for them okay and with your tenant domain of course and that guest user will be accessing okay so in that case that guest account exists in your organization as normal user as a normal user account or a normal user type and here you can define the user type is equal to guest so when you are going to collaborate with external user the very first step is that you are going to invite external user as a guest so when external user is there he will be using his existing credential for the authentication when he is authenticated himself then he would be getting permission for accessing the uh, resources now it's up to you as an administrator you can restrict what external user should he use or see or at what level he should be accessing any resources now when you are going to talk about the b2b of course very first thing you need to know how to invite external user so for that if you want you can individually invite users or you have option to invite them as a in a bulk now you need to of course when they are added 
you need to manage them of course in your azure active directory so here we have just observed the setting related with the external user like for right as the normal user that is in your environment or you want to restrict them so azure ad b2b collaboration user are added as a guest but and guest users permission in the directory are restricted by default okay so of course it is restricted by default but your business may need some guests to fill higher privilege role like you need to give them the admin role user management role user creation role depend as per the requirement so to support defining higher privilege role guest user can be added to any role organization you can also provide guest user a least privilege least privilege in the sense a uh, kind of a specific role a specific role that he is going to deal with or for a specific time period or whenever he is going to access that role he need permission to access so that you will be notified that yes now that guest user is going to access that particular resources so here you can understand this diagram where there is a user there is a member user and a guest user when there is a member user he is actually the type is member and the guest user the user type is guest when there is a user type member he is home in organization directory and home is an external directory okay so here he can have uh, identity in cloud or in on premises and home in an external directory then external azure ad or or right to that external uh, uh, external directory now when he is added as a guest user or he is a b2b user in that case he is not on organization payroll okay in that case he can have identity on cloud or on on premises like we have just discussed stage 4 and stage 3 and in case of stage 1 as says to he is added as a external azure ad or with a microsoft account now we can configure different identity providers like here you can have uh, like the direct federation like you can set up the direct federation uh, with any organization whose identity provider supports the security uh, assertion assertion like uh, for it yes uh, mic is not on mute okay akash i am repeating azure ad b2b i think i am on the same slide okay so azure ad b2b means that is business to business collaboration where the another account like for example google okay so that identity provider you are going to set up that identity in your environment as a external that is b2b collaboration like here as i am discussing you can have the direct federation in a direct federation with a partners idp a new guest from that domain can use their own idp managed organization account to sign in okay so there is no need for the guest user to create a separate azure ad account so here the first example this is for the google as a identity provider the user can use his gmail id to access your environment resources okay like here you can see he is using b2b user gmail.com this is what b2b external identity provider by using facebook he is using his facebook id facebook account to access your organization resources i hope uh, the concept was clear akash should i repeat myself okay
now we have just covered identity part we have discussed the user setting tenant wise setting we have discussed external identities and groups now as we are discussing again and again about the external identity sorry uh, hybrid identity now what is this hybrid means hybrid ma means ma'am just a minute ma'am mm -hmm. state 3 and 4 that part i am I, i still want to understand okay okay i will take you to that slide again okay? um, no problem external user means guest users or guest user perfect user right so external user means guest uh, yes i am talking about this diagram your organization you are having some internal users right this one you are talking about yes yes okay in first case the user is a member of external user is a member of that organization in second case the external user is not a member of that organization it is external external azure ad right see here in stage 1 that person is using microsoft account like that is the hotmail account outlook.com okay state 2 i am talking about this is state 2 state 1 means external azure ad means there is another xyz organization he is having their own azure ad they are handling their identities in azure ad and they uh, like their users are accessing your services they are accessing your services got it so they are known as external azure ad this is for state 1 and state 2 now come to state 3 state 3 means your identities are actually on premises identity in the sense i am talking about the guest your guest is on premises as i said when we are talking about identities you know before that azure ad era we were having x that active directory was used to manage your on premise identity that identity was not on cloud so that was on premise identity similarly with your own identities you were having guest identities too so here is stage 3 means your guest identities are synchronized with your cloud synchronized with your azure ad so they are put under stage 3 and we are talking about the stage 4 stage 4 means is totally the b2b where they are on cloud they are gmail they are using facebook they are using any other identity service provider i hope this funda is clear to you yes ma'am so state 1 and state 2 the user external user is not a part of active directory uh, or or azure active directory no no see when state we are talking one. state is state one in next state two means user is having microsoft account or he is a part of any other organizations azure okay not yours uh, in any case he is not a part of my organization guest means what guest means he is okay he is a guest only acha in in the first it case it can be state the, one in in this first case when user type is equal to member in this case the user is a part of organization yes he in this user is a part of your organization and again if the user type is member you may have identities who are on your payroll okay like the full time employee okay they are on your payroll but there may be some identities they are is but just they can work in your environment you just create their identity for some time got it yes i'm now clear thank you okay perfect so here again state 1 state 2 they are using microsoft account or azure ad external organization account 
but the state what is the difference between state 2 and state 4 when you say state 2 is microsoft account so that is also cloud only account right mm -hmm. where microsoft is the uh, right. authentication provider right so as we know that azure ad is what it's a microsoft right hotmail microsoft outlook.com microsoft got it so under state 2 got it but when i'm talking state 4 it is not only of course microsoft account is included but yes any identities any cloud provider that you can include here like gmail yahoo any xyz so to enable state 4 we need to configure something in azure ad separately because by no, default, no. Uh, state four will not be enabled, right? No, no, it's not like that. So when you are sending. Yes, you can mention his Gmail ID. No problem. The invite can be sent to his ID. Got it. But from administrator point of view, it can make sense. Like if you want to restrict any domain, if you want to restrict any cloud provider, that you can manage it. Okay. I hope and in state three, uh, yeah, in state three, guest user is created in on prem of my tenant, right? Yeah, they are part of again, they are guest, but they are a part of on premise identity service and they are synchronized with your Azure AD. Okay, one when I'm talking about on premise. On premise means it's an active directory. When I'm talking about the cloud, it is Azure Active Directory. This is the difference between Azure AD and AD. And when a guest user is created in on prem, so that time also user can log in with their guest account. I mean, yes. their email ID. Okay. Yes, of course, because here you are going to synchronize that id with your cloud got it okay so uh, the difference between state 3 yes. and state 1 Azure. is that in state 1 um, the guest account is created uh, in azure ad and in state 3 the account is created on prem ad active directory right okay. on prem so difference between Azure AD is what? Cloud and on-premise means on-premises means your active directory. Okay. Got it? Any other question? Any other doubt? Okay, so moving forward, I was... So now we need to understand the concept of hybrid. As I said, uh, as we were discussing. Uh, just one more question. Can you move back to that slide? Which one, two, three, four, sorry. where we can. Yeah. Just one more. Yeah, any other question you have? Yeah, in that slide where we have states, one, two, three, okay. four. Okay, okay, just a minute. This one? Yes, now coming back when user type is membered. Uh, so, mm -hmm. when do we create uh, the, the third block external user AD, uh, but user type is member? What is that situation when we create like that? See, when you are sending the invite, you can send invite whether he, is, he can be added as a guest or he is added as a member. Okay, so we have two type of user member and guest so when you are using it as a as a member he is homed in an external directory actually he is a part of external directory but you can add him as a member so here only admin can invite him as a this is actually somehow uh, it is kind of this external authority it is kind of a stage one here. But the only difference here you are adding them as a guest and here you are adding them as a member. 
So when we add it as a member, will that user be created in my tenant? No, right? How will the user log in? Log in with the external user ID, right? Yes, yes. As an external, because of course he is a part of external Azure AD. So whatever the ID he is using in that external Azure AD, he can use that. But only the difference is that he will be added as a Okay, it is something like you are living in a family. Okay, in our family, we are having, for example, five members and we all are members. We call ourselves as a member and as a member, we just do all the activities. We have some responsibilities. We have some accessibility like we are a member. We can go to any room. We do not need any permission. We do not have any uh, kind of hesitation. Should we go to this room or not? But if any guest come to your home, to your home, he is having some limited access. He cannot just roam around anywhere in your house. Okay, he must be having some, uh, okay, should I go to this home or should I knock the door before entering the room? Okay. Now, for example, you may have that are actually kind of your neighbors. Okay, they are kind of your neighbors. And when you have good terms with your neighbor, so after some time, actually that neighbor becomes a part of your family. So now that is no more a guest. You call them as a family member or, or a very close friend of yours. After a long time of friendship, after a nine year, 10 year of friendship, that is no more guest for you. He is kind of a member for you. Okay, so he frequently visit to your home and he is just like a member. He's he's like uh, very much casual living in your home. Wherever he want, he just come and just <laughs> uh, share your lunch and dinners wherever he wants. He just uh, just stay at night and all kind of. Just imagine the same concept here. You are as being user as a member, but still he is a part of external Azure AD. Got it? But he is having all the rights, whatever a member of your organizations are having. Got it? Yes. The only thing I am trying to find out the practical example when organization is going to create such account. Because if we have some kind of uh, merging company merge, then we will add that domain itself to my tenant, right? So that all the users become member of my tenant. But uh, when is that scenario that particular set of people will become member, but not the other? See, generally, you know, this concept is used when you are working with any identities who are going to work frequently in your organization. Like you have uh, given a project to someone, he is given some responsibility for three months, for one month or for one year. So for that long period of time, he is going to work frequently with that identity. He needs that user access. The way other users are accessing the login access and the services, the same way that person needs the access. In that case, you need to add them as a member because by default, as I said, by default, guests are having some restricted in the tenant. So just to avoid that restriction, you can add them as a member, but still they will be using their own ID. Okay. Got it? Like a contractor employee or something. Perfect, perfect. The contractor employee. You Thank can you. consider them as a member. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Okay. So moving forward, yeah. Yeah, so I was discussing about the hybrid, like as we have just discussed the identity. So nowadays we all uh, are working in a cloud environment, okay? Like especially after this uh, COVID period, most of the organization, they have shifted towards the cloud because nowadays we, uh, we find more flexibility, more secure environment when we are working in cloud and we can give this flexibility to our user to work 
not uh, with with a with a location limitation he can work when he is at home we can have this culture work from home okay so in that case it is very important for us to create and manage the identity in cloud but it's not suits to every organization means uh, like for example uh, organization they are from banking sector finance sector in that case it is not go and uh, adopt the cloud somehow they are not able to do so because of some security restrictions they have some information they have some data some application that is only accessible when they are in that organization environment when they are in corporate network so in that case they have to set up their in one in identities or some services on premises got it so in that case what to do should i leave this cloud environment cloud environment this is what actually the current need or the future need we will say so jumping on the cloud or taking the advantage of cloud or just for the security point of view security concern i should be restricted on on premises so there is a middle way what that is to create the hybrid set means organization who wants to take the benefit of on premises plus few services they want that is what the hybrid setup in that case your identities are synchronized with on premise server and your cloud now they are uh, now they are able to access both the services they are or the resources which is on premises and on cloud so when they are accessing uh, from their office or from their organization or from their corporate network they would be able to my resources and when they are out of their office there are some services there are some application or document they can access from cloud so from for that scenario basically this hybrid concept is there so in that case you are working with both azure active directory and your active directory and now you have to synchronize them as both are different services azure active directory is on cloud and active directory is on premise so for that you have a tool that is ad connect ad connect in between just connect both the things and set up the hybrid environment so before setting this azure active directory connect azure ad connect here you have to understand the different concept like as i said azure ad connect it works as a bridge between your cloud azure active directory connect it provide the synchronization it provide the password hash synchronization pass through authentication federation integration and health monitoring so we'll discuss it one by one see when you are going to synchronization means it is going to synchronize both the services and here you have main authentication method that how your identities are going to authenticate themselves so the very first thing that is azure ad password hash synchron you are adopting this authentication technique in that case your user will not be able to confuse like they will be only using one user id and password for accessing both cloud and on premises resources like in my case for example i am using komal@xyz.com and i am having a password so whether i am using on cloud or whether i am using on premise i will be using same user id and password okay hash synchronization and by default when you uh, use ad connect this is set up but if you have another requirement like if you want to add simple password validation for azure ad authentication services that using a software agent here actually this password or the authentication is on premises here 
you are not doing this authentication on cloud when you are using azure ad password hashing means the authentication process is managed on cloud okay but pass through authentication this is actually this more on premise service here you have on premise server and that server take care of the authentication part and in case of federation authentication here you are more concerned concentrated on the authentication where you have a separate federation server who is going to take care of your authentication system so these all are the main three authentication server so when so, uh, so, the simple password hash yeah yeah in password hash synchronization the passwords are also synced to the cloud yes no not sync it is managed in cloud only for on premises ad user if mm -hmm. that user is accessing is wants to access application in cloud so the mm -hmm. password he will enter that will be valid authenticated or validated by on premises or azure ad in password hash this is what password is synchronized yeah so password is synchronized and that is managed this authentication services managed in cloud only this okay. is actually managed by your azure active directory okay okay this is a default method okay in that case user are accessing your cloud resources plus your on premises okay and this is very simple and very very safest option for the authentication like here you will the user a user is accessing this cloud services the saas services okay and here you have azure ad in between and this is your active directory this is your on premises where you have on premises resources now in between there is between your azure ad and between your active directory there is a azure ad connect in that case you have azure ad hybrid identity with password hash synchronization this is managed in cloud only suppose in this case user is logging no into some on premise application uh, sorry yes yes in this case now, now user, user is wants yeah wants to log into some on premise application so definitely is not going to azure ad right so password Absolutely. is there in both on prem and uh, online both it means you have resources in cloud that is of course azure uh, sorry this uh, saas services you have office 365 services office 365 mm -hmm. apps plus you may have different application and local services on premise services yes. ma'am uh, just azure ad you need to sign in Azure AD Connect is the agent installed on that premise. It is not installed anywhere. Azure, Azure AD, AD Connect. Any... Azure Because AD Connect is. Yes, sir. You repeat. You complete yourself. Then I will discuss. Yes, Active Directory mm -hmm. is on the premises. Mm -hmm. On premises. perfect. Mm -hmm. But how the connectivity between the Azure AD and the azure act uh, on premise active directory it's there is a azure ad connect is the mm -hmm. service or any agent or install on the that server or something okay so azure ad connect is a tool that is provided via azure active directory like if you have noticed when i was exploring the platform of azure active directory on the dashboard itself we have got ad connect got it and the same azure ad connect you need on premises got it so same azure ad connect you need on premises okay in this uh, session actually we are not able to cover the practical part but in when we actually take the session uh, with the deep dive of sc300 certification i covered the full lab how this ad connect works and how ad connect actually synchronizes okay 
got it thanks okay so in that case so you need actually this ad connect tool on your uh, cloud okay which is accessible by azure ad and it is x it should be there on active directory got it so when you are yeah. using azure yes mm -hmm. yes ma'am you have mentioned identity slash sync with password hashes mm -hmm. from azure ad connect to azure ad that means the identity and the password get sync with the azure ad from azure ad connect perfect okay so the password and identity sync the user when user wants to access sas application user mm -hmm. will log in to azure ad and azure ad at the back end will uh, authenticate the user through azure ad mm -hmm. connect which provides syncing between active directory on premise ad to azure ad no 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 Okay, how, let me clear one works. more time. How it works. Let me clear. Azure AD Connect, this is just a tool or this is just a bridge between your Active Directory and Azure Active Directory. Okay. Once the bridge is done, then automatically when the first time you have connected your Azure AD with your Active Directory, automatically this authentication services is there. This is a default one. But if you want, you can set up once it is synchronized. Then automatically your password has synchronization starts. Means if user is setting, resetting the password, is changing the password, automatically it is changed for Active Directory. Means only one ID and password will be used whether he is using cloud services or whether he is using Active Directory. But make sure your identity is managed. Sorry, your authentication is managed on cloud only. Any? Fine, fine. Thank you, ma'am. So user will but sign free, into Azure AD free. and 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 the identity and the passwords uh, sync will be managed by the Azure AD itself. Perfect. Yes, Azure it will be managing AD. Azure AD. Hello. Okay. But free Azure AD don't provide the uh, password reset option for the users, right? Of course. It has to be premium AD. Yes. And the password write back also? Password write back when you get the. Uh, yes. Azure AD connect only. How frequently does When you are uh, using Azure, Azure AD. Sorry. I had a question, mm -hmm. Kumar. Mm -hmm. um, how frequently this Azure AD Connect gets uh, synced up with Active Directory on premises? Uh, can we uh, schedule it or uh, how is it? No, it is manually done. And at the time of that, uh, when you're you performing this, uh, uh, this process, you can schedule this task. While, when you will be doing the practical for the same, you will get to know, okay, that yes, now we can. Like, it's not like if you do not want to immediately start it, you can schedule it as per your convenience. But it okay. is auto sync, I think. Sorry? It is auto sync, automatically sync up between the Azure AD and that Active Directory. No, without AD Connect, how it will be automatically sync? No, without AD Connect, mm. it won't. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Without AD Connect, you cannot sync. It is not at all automatic. Okay, yes. then only these identities will be synchronized. Got it? This is what the pass through authentication. When you are using pass through authentication, now this time your identity or authentication is managed on premise. This is the difference between password hash and pass. Again, user is able to access your uh, cloud services and your on premises, but this authentication. So here there is an agent requirement for pass through authentication. Okay. 
here you can notice there is a authentication agent which is working on premises with your active directory okay so in this case this is pass through authentication and here okay so here azure id connect is not authentication required. sorry uh, for pass through the second option uh, why is mm -hmm. azure id connect required in any case when you need hybrid setup you need azure ad connect but when you have synchronized identity of course you need to manage the authentication part too okay now it's up to you where you want the authentication process to take takes whether you your process on cloud you can go for password hash synchronization if you want authentication process should be followed should be taken care and managed on premise you can have authentication agent but it will work on premise okay generally like as i said uh, banking sector and all they prefer that authentication agent should be installed on premises so they do not go for password hash synchronization but in any case this is what we are just discussing the authentication process synchronization synchronization automatically it is covered in in all the three authentication process whether you are going to use hash you are going to pass through or it is federated in any case we are using azure ad connect i hope i am making sense yes ma'am so next we have federated authentication so for federated you have a federated server here this is what the federation and this server is going to take care of the authentication part so just the difference between authentication agent and pass through authentication and federated authentication is that both are on premises but here you have authentication agent for pass through authentication and here you have federation server on premises any question so far so when we say federation uh, pros, proxy uh, authentication is being handled at the federation server is it yes works. see this authentication management is done with the federation server this is the on premise server like it take care of the authentication part whether the user has provided the correct identity or not whether the if you have set up the multi factor authentication it will be taken care by a federation server so initially in the initial phase uh, That that we discussed was done at the Azure AD level authentication and also at the on premises. Now here it all yes, happens yes. at the federation server level. It's yes, not at the yes. Azure AD level at all. all. Right. So I am repeating one more time. See, when you are with password hash synchronization, here we do not need to use any agent. We do not need to use any server. That's why this. Set option when you are going to use Azure AD Connect and you are going to set up hybrid environment. Okay, and here you are not at all going to take care about the authentication part because everything is taken care by the cloud provider. Okay, because your identity and the authentication is managed in cloud. But here you will say no, I want to manage authentication part. So for that. you need to have authentication agent on premises in that case your authentication process will be managed on premises now and when we are discussing about on premise federation services so here you have federation server who is going to take care of your federation okay he is going to take care of your authentication process So this is the difference between these three methods. Ma'am, authentication agent is installed in each uh, domain user computer. Yes. 
and through that authentication agent, the authentication will be managed by on-premises AD. Right, correct. Okay. So now if you will understand this diagram, this AD concept, AD con Now here, when you are using Azure AD, earlier we have discussed the authentication method. Now here in this diagram, we will understand how Azure AD works. Okay. So here Azure AD connect. First, you have Active Directory Forest. This is on-premise and you have Azure AD that is cloud. Okay. So when you are starting with Azure AD Connect, the very first thing is that it imports the data from your Active Directory and in between. So for that, it automatically creates a space. In that space, this is also known as connector space. He just pick up the data. He just import the data and keep it in a connector space. And then he has performed the work for the synchronization. So when the synchronization part is done, then this is exported to Azure AD. Got it? And again, before the exporting part, again, they need it is needed the connector part. Then again, when it is taken imported from the Azure AD again, and export to the active directory. This is how this process takes place. And so this is how your hybrid infrastructure is set up. Got it? So there is actually Azure AD connector engine which works in behind. And whatever the data you are importing and exporting, so just for that time period, there is a SQL database in behind which is working for you. Azure AD Connect process for importing and exporting the data, the SQL database helps you out to hold your data for a moment. Once the synchronization process is done, this is empty. I hope it is clear to you all. Uh, this is how actually, we actually lost you on the metaverse. Can you explain on that? There's a <laughs> signal break actually in between. Once synchronization has been done, from uh, import uh, connector space to metaverse and then metaverse to connector space. Then what happened? Right. You are saying something empty. See here what I'm saying. See, for example, you have two containers. In one container, you have put some objects and you have another uh, container where you have put some objects. Now, when you are going to mix those objects, for that, you need one more temporary space for some time where you are keeping the object and then putting it somewhere else. Similarly, here you have this SQL database that works in behind. The objects that need to be synchronized are created here based on the synchronization rule that you have defined. Got it? So metaverse is what? Metaverse is an object that need to be synchronized are created here based on the synchronization rule. And objects must exist in that MV. Okay. So object must exist in this MV before exporting or importing. Is it clear? Yes. Yes. So, uh, so import. Uh, One MV. Okay, there is only one metaverse. Okay. Okay. So if we create some Azure only identity, mm -hmm. and uh, does 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 that uh, mean that that identity will also go to on prem? Of course, when you are synchronizing, synchronizing means here. If you will notice, we are importing the data and exporting to Azure AD. Same way it is imported from Azure AD and exported to Active Directory. Okay, but uh, a few identities yeah. already you have created in on-premise. Mm -hmm. But that, that yes. is cloud only account. 
Suppose I am creating some identity that is cloud only account that goes to on prem, but we will not be able to log in in on prem system using that account, right? See, if you have the setup in your organization for on prem ISS and for Azure AD, you can synchronize this, no problem. Oh. It's up so to in, import. Uh, you, if you set up, you do not need even that uh, Azure AD. Mm -hmm. Yes. I'm saying that import. Uh, suppose one object needs to be sync from on premises mm -hmm. AD to Azure AD, so that mm -hmm. one object will move to the uh, character space, then to metaverse space, sync, and then again sync to another connector space. Which is connected and finally it will get exported to Azure AD. So mm -hmm. in in this whole process, what is the yes. any any time or 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 vice versa? Also, it happens or only one way it happens. One way in, in uh, what do you mean by one way? One way means that only if, uh, I am changing attribute uh, object attribute in on premise AD only. Only then it mm -hmm. will get synced. If I'm changing attribute in Azure AD, it will again get go back to Azure Active Directory Forest. Yes, of course. It depends on the. OK. In setting what you are giving. OK, and the syn synchronization rule is. Which you are talking about. Synchronization rule means if you want to only select particular business unit, if you want to select particular user, any group you want to include, any security group, it's up to you. OK. OK, so when you will be having that interface for Azure AD Connect, you will be observing different settings, synchronization setting that you can provide there. We will come to know. Uh, now, of course, concept. when you will perform the synchronization. Yeah, I'm saying we will that? come to know. We will come to know through the console. When we will when we will uh, sync this object from a on prem AD to Azure AD, that the object lies at which level, metaverse level or connector level? Oh. Yes, and yes, of course. Where it get stuck? Okay. Yes, yes. That's what I am talking about. The synchronization error. You may see when you will be using Azure AD Connect, you will get to know that it creates for you. It creates a temporary data for you. You and you will be notified that okay in this section you are getting this error. OK, so now if you are having any troubleshoot uh, a synchronization error, how to troubleshoot that? So first you may have some errors like this are the common errors that we frequently face. First, you can have the data mismatch error. OK, so if you are taking the identity from here and uh, for example on premises, he is having another role. Or another surname, and where you are going to that Azure Active Directory, here you have another uh, department, another group, or user, or any other name. Or already there is a user who is with the same name. So, in that case, you can have data mismatch error. Then you can have the duplicate attribute. Already that duplicate create uh, that user is already there in that environment. In that case, it will give you duplicate attribute error. Then you may have data validation fa failure means your data is not properly validated. Then you may have large objects. Sometimes it may happen that you have to uh, perform the synchronization in modules, in the steps, in phases. So when it is in large, it may create some problem or some error. Or it can be like, for example, uh, you have on-premises uh, identity who is having user administrator role. And on on cloud at face you may have that role conflict error so these all are the common errors that you may face now data here when you are having data mismatch mm -hmm. means you, are, you mentioned an invalid soft match data mismatch in the sense means data mismatch means like here you have identity on premise like here my name is Om Komal Sharma. OK, but on cloud, my identity is created with Komal M Sharma. OK, so it will give you data mismatch error. Got it? 
Yes, okay. Now, when you are working with Azure, here you have option for Azure AD Connect Health. This Azure AD Connect Health, it will let you know if you have any error or any other problem, then it is to help you out just to monitor the activity. Okay, so Azure AD, uh, Azure Active Directory Connect Health is just the purpose is that to, uh, to analyze the health or just for the monitoring purpose. So you can explore this. This is uh, this option you will get in as you are not going to no more work with on premises. All the management work will be done in on cloud. Then for uh, Azure AD Connect Health, you need to have P1 or P2 license. And if you are a global administrator, then only you can deploy and configure the same. Uh, Azure AD Connect on e-server, you want to collect the health data. Then if you want to have it from Azure or Azure AD Domain Service Machine. So firewall has to be open for a specific IT read, else it will not be working. Then TLS inspection can block install or operation. Then uh, it can be used via PowerShell or, or later required. Then FIPS complaint encryption must be disabled. Then to manage the Azure Active Directory Connect Health, here when you will get this interface, and set up the email notification like as a global admin you can set up your email and whenever there will be any error you will be immediately notified via email like here you will notice there is an error okay and this is azure ad connect synchronized service is not whatever the error is there and whenever there is any other automatically you will be notified so it's not every time you are not going to come here and check if there is error or not better Set your email ID for the notification. There are some form that how you can delete a server or a service instance. Like you can delete a server from your Azure AD Connect Health Service in future if it is required, or instance from Azure AD Connect. Or if you want to manage access with Azure role based access control, like how to remove the user or a group or whether you want to allow user or group to access uh, Azure AD Connect Health or not. So there is a link for the video. I just want you to access that so that you will be having better understanding about Azure AD Connect Health. Okay, I've shared the video for the same. You can explore it. Then for the troubleshooting, how you can die. So when uh, this particular errors is there, you can you can have the synchronization error happens. It's just common to see a user principal name or a proxy address conflict in Azure AD. So you might solve the synchronization error just by updating the conflicting source object from the on-premise side. 
and the synchronization error will be solved after the next synchronization so for example here it indicated two users have the conflicts of their uh, of that of their user principal name okay so for example on one place they have another principal name and other or a second place in that case you can have this kind of problem so this is a duplicate Ma user principal these links are going to 404 sorry these links are not working the last two links no i think the second last must not be working but the recent link i have shared it must work did not work no it's not working okay i think might be microsoft has removed this page maybe but here you can try this one what is azure ad connect and connect health yeah this is working i will be sharing this one you can avoid that one i am just sharing new one ma'am microsoft enterprise is what is this microsoft enterprise is mentioned as your active directory hyphen microsoft entra Oh, you are talking about the link I have shared. And she, yes, it is mentioned in this hyphen Microsoft Entra. Mm -hmm. What is this Microsoft? This Microsoft Entra is what is actually was for the micro. See, Microsoft is what whatever the Microsoft services. Getting you the proper documentation for that. So when you will referring these links, you will be getting the. it is actually basically for the learning platform okay so you will be getting different links on that microsoft entra for that microsoft different services and all okay okay so we were discussing about the troubleshooting yeah so here uh, you might find that there is some uh, an existing user who just loses to the source anchor okay i think we were discussing about this only yeah so here again the detection of the source object it happens in on premise active directory so this error can be detected so when an existing user is in cloud only object you can also see the conflicting user synchronization to azure ad and the user cannot be matched in synchronization to the existing object and to the ramp of source anchor actually the diagnose feature support user object with a different duplicated attributes like user principal name proxy address then uh, sib proxy address then on premise security identifier so we are done with module 1 so just to have the summary for the same we have discuss about the initial azure ad configuration we have discuss about the azure ad role the custom roles what is part of administrative unit so what is the tenant wide setting settings are available uh, how to work with external identity to go for the external collaborations how guest users can be added in your organization that all we have discussed we have configured uh, and managed the identity part to like how to add a user groups licenses and all and last we have discussed about the hybrid identity what is azure ad connect what are the hybrid environment okay how to implement uh, what is azure ad connect health and so on so these all are the labs that uh, i will try to cover up most of the labs if time permits as i wants to give you the overview of uh, other modules too guys this is what uh, this is just the exam preparation session so that's why i would not be able to go in deep for every topics so i will try to give you the understanding of different topics so that at least you can prepare yourself for exam 
but if you want to uh, go for that deep dive yeah i think chetali will be guiding you how you can uh, go for the deep dive of sc 300 course so that you will be having a better idea about the sc 300 certification course where all the labs will be covered all the modules all the topics will be discussed in detail okay so let's take a break for one hour and after the break we will come back and we will start with the lab
Guys, I have shared the MOC code with you all on your register mail ID. Please check. I have shared the MOC code. Those who have submitted the MOC activation form, the code has been sent on their mail IDs. So please check. Also, do follow the uh, mention steps to redeem the code and get access to the MOC for SC300. I repeat, I have shared the MOC code with you all on your register mail ID. So follow the steps and redeem the code before it get expired. Thank you.